Was the real-life Count St. Germain immortal? A lot of people thought so, because he did a lot of crazy things during his life. And I'll go ahead and tell you all about him, coming up next on Pumpkin Pie Friday. Welcome back, everybody, to Pumpkin Pie Friday, a series where on Fridays I tell you something about your world, set to a video game in the background to keep with the theme of the channel. Now, today we're going to talk about Count St. Germain. If you ever watched the Netflix show Castlevania, then you might know a little bit about him, or at least heard his name. But Count St. Germain, wow, this guy has a story. So let's dissect this. Let's dissect why people might think he is immortal, or why people of his time thought he might be immortal. So Count St. Germain kind of appears out of nowhere. All right, nobody knows where he really came from, and that's another big part of this mystery. So he kind of shows up in the 1600s, to maybe early 1700s and he has historical so there's historical document on this guy visiting all these courts clear across Europe like everywhere like all these royal courts right so he is like making friends with kings and queens and princes and princesses and and dukes and counts and earls all over Europe now that would take a pretty special guy to be able to basically be friends with all these all these monarchs and, and royalty, but nobody even knows where he came from. So he's born probably in the late 1600s. He shows up in the 1700s. This dude knew like tons of languages and he was fluent in them. He, was, he mastered them. He didn't have an accent according to uh, people of the day. He just knew what he was saying. And among these languages that he knew, we're talking about Dutch and Russian and French and Swedish and Spanish. He knew a whole lot of languages. He was fluent in them all. And that's how he was able to talk to the locals wherever he went and charm these, these nobility, this nobility class, um, and get stays in palaces and uh, great giant mansions and things like that. So we actually know about St. Germain because he was written about in many letters, political documents, other historical recordings. So this is not just like somebody making this up 10 years ago on the internet. And he's found in recorded history all over Europe. So once again, proving that this guy was going all over Europe and was friends with all these, you know, rock stars of the age, these famous people, these these uh, these well-known nobles and members of royalty, all throughout Europe. So beyond being able to charm the nobility of the era, this guy had an innumerable amount of talents, including that he was a master painter. He was also said to be flawless on the violin and anybody who's had to play violin understands that that is a tough instrument to play this guy was flawless on it he was also said to be very proficient on the harpsichord which is another type of instrument that is extremely hard to play he composed his own musical works which it takes a genius to write a good composition and he was doing it but not only that we can tell he was talented at it simply because there were other musicians of the era who wanted to collaborate with him and wrote compositions with him. And we actually have two of his works in the British Museum today. Again, this is not just, you know, information from the ether. We have recorded information about Count St. Germain and all these amazing things that he was part of. So then, yes, there's more. So when he was at the Shah's court, he was at the Shah of Persia, okay, which is, uh, I believe, modern-day Iran. He was uh, at the Shah's court for five years, and records from there say that he perfected jewel crafting to the point where he could remove flaws from diamonds, all right? This, that is no easy feat. In fact, that would have been one of the hardest things to do. It was like whatever this guy touched, he just became amazing at it. It just became second nature to him. Can you imagine? Do you know anybody like that? That just that whatever they do, they just become one of the best at it. 
it's not even that he could just understand it, right? Like we can all pick up certain talents and skills by, you know, uh, practice and, and working hard and, and studying them. But he would become the elite. So after Count St. Germain's stay at the Shah's court, he goes on to England where records show that he was arrested for spying for the exiled Stuart King, James II. But then he just charmed his way out of prison because within a very short time, he was recorded as being in the French court. That's uh, King Louis XV's French court. And King Louis XV actually used him for several uh, different diplomatic and supposedly spy missions. In the 1750s, he goes on over to India. So he just comes and goes as he pleases out of these, out of these royal courts. He goes to India. In India, he meets Voltaire. Now, Voltaire is a huge figure in French history. Uh, his name was Francois-Marie de Arouet. And he meets him, and Voltaire is struck by St. Germain so much that he's actually quoted as saying that St. Germain is a man that knows everything and never dies. <laughs> that's, that's some heavy words to put to another person, especially when you're that influential and well-known where everybody's looking at what you say, and he just comes right out and says, oh, yeah, St. Germain, yeah, he never dies, and he knows everything. So imagine how impressive St. Germain had to be for Voltaire to say something like that. Now, St. Germain would also be documented to have traveled to Russia, Germany, and Bavaria, and once again, he stayed with the prominent nobility and royalty of the uh, areas on his travels. Every single powerful person across Europe was basically opening their doors to this guy and saying, come on in. And if he knew everything that we think he did, then that would be a good reason for people to want him to stop by. If someone knew historical knowledge beyond what you've ever learned and they knew tons of languages and they were just amazing at everything they did, you might want to spend a night with them. You might open your doors and say, yeah, come on, spend the night. Show me how you do some of this cool stuff. So why did people think that maybe this guy was mortal? Well, part of it was just his vast knowledge of everything and the way he knew so many languages. I mean, it would just occur to people that maybe this guy's been around a long time and that's why he knows all this stuff and that's why he's been able to perfect all these languages. But beyond that, People knew that he delved into alchemy. And back then, there was this uh, big belief that um, alchemy was basically the way to immortality, that you can make these elixirs or you can make these stones or these things to ingest where you could actually become immortal and have everlasting life. And because he knew all of these things and was good at so many things, and also he was messing around with alchemy, People thought maybe this guy is immortal. I mean, Vol Voltaire himself was like, this guy never dies. There was another guy, this Italian author, uh, Giacomo Girolamo Casanova, who met St. Germain in 1760. And he's quoted as saying, the extraordinary man would say in an easy, assured manner that he was 300 years old, that he knew the secret of universal medicine. And other associates uh, were recorded as saying that St. Germain had to be over 100 years old. Now, there is no doubt that there is documented evidence of some amazing things this man did. But I'm going to tell you a little story that is kind of famously associated with St. Germain. Now, this, of course, it's recorded history, but take it with a grain of salt. It could have just been someone making up a story that got recorded. But if this is true, this just adds to the legend of St. Germain. And if it isn't true, St. Germain already has tons of evidence pointing to just some jaw-dropping, awesome things that he did with his life that were beyond anybody of the time, and probably beyond most people in recorded history. So there was a uh, countess, Countess von Gregory. She shared a tale 
where another lady named Madame de Pompadour, a courtesan of the French king Louis XV, claimed that she had met Saint Germain in 1710, and then saw him again 50 years later. But when she saw him again 50 years later, she had kind of like this double take, and she went up to the man and was like, you know, you remind me of someone I knew in my youth named Count Saint Germain, and he tells her, yeah, that was me. That was me that you met. But she says he didn't age a day. So take that story however you want. But that is that is pretty awesome as well. And that would also point to some incredible things. Now, does this last story and all the other evidence of St. Germain's life uh, point that he might be immortal? Well, possibly. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a supernatural thing. Think about... Uh, what science has been able to accomplish as far as lengthening our lives with uh, medical science and food science and hygiene, things that we understand now to help us extend our lives. If this man just had some kind of extraordinary knowledge or his brain just worked that much better than us, uh, us other folk, (laughs) you know, it could be a possibility that through science, through something very natural in our world, he was able to figure out how to extend his life and even possibly uh, slow down the aging process, as the last story would kind of suggest. Now, I'm not totally discounting supernatural things because I definitely believe in supernatural things or what we would consider supernatural. But remember, all things are kind of viewed as supernatural that you can't explain until you're able to explain them. So if we went back 300 years with computers and cars and and even like a lighter, stuff like that, uh, to people back then, they would most likely considered most of the stuff we do now, like using a computer, watching TV, things like that would be supernatural to them. They wouldn't understand how. So it could just be that his knowledge was so much more advanced. Now, It could be that he wasn't immortal, and some false uh, stories kind of intertwine themselves with the real ones, but the real documented evidence that we have of him and, and the things that people said of him show a very, very incredible person who led a very incredible life. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoy learning these things and watching some video game action in the background, please check out the other videos on the channel because I love sharing knowledge and I love playing video games and I wanted to mix them together and that's why we have Pumpkin Pie Friday. So watch some of the other videos. I talk about Lulu, the pig who saved her owner. I talk about um, how the sandwich came to be, just things that you might not think about too much, why we call Tuesday, Tuesday. So interesting stories about your world so you can learn a little bit more about the place you live. So come back next Friday, have a slice of pumpkin pie with you. You can eat while you enjoy the story. The story was a bit longer, so maybe you would have eaten about half a pie by now, but you know, it's all good, right? It's all good. It's all fun. It's all good times. So I hope to see you next Friday and I hope you enjoy your weekend. Until then, this Primordial Pumpkin Playthroughs. See ya.